Um, is there something funny about pots? Are we recording? Can that be the opening? <laughs> Can that be the opening? Is there something funny about pots? That's kind of funny. Lord. <laughs> We're talking about pots today. How about that? Pots used to confuse me so much. I was so worried that I was picking the wrong pot for my plants. And putting your plant in the right pot is essential for a happy and healthy houseplant. So I want to break down every single type of pot that you could have for your houseplant, when you're going to choose them, and why you're going to choose them. So let's dive right in. Welcome to Growing Joy with Maria Plant Friend. I'm Maria, your new best plant friend, and I am here to help you successfully care for plants and grow some joy in your life. I've been doing it on my top-rated houseplant podcast, Growing Joy with Plants, for the last seven years, and now pots are visual. I knew I needed to make a video about this for you to show you how to do this. Make sure you catch my repotting tutorial that I've already aired, and now let's talk about how to choose what pots to repot or up-pot your plants in. Let's begin with terracotta. I think we're going to work our way from like simplest and cheapest to fanciest slash most expensive. So I'm going to be honest with you. Most of my houseplants are potted in terracotta for multiple reasons. Number one, I love the look of terracotta. I love the look of a fresh terracotta. I mean, I just think a warm earth tone really anchors an entire plant collection. But as terracotta ages, as you walk it, it will leach out some of the like different uh, chemicals and, and chlorine or calcium in the water. And it will do this thing, it, it will become a little patinaed. And I really love the way a patinaed terracotta pot looks. I just think it's very whimsical and I enjoy it, right? So all my houseplants are potted in these. Also, these are cheap. You can buy these at your local garden center or big box store for between a dollar and six dollars. Because I have a lot of houseplants, this is just the most affordable way for me to pot them in. A few reasons why I like terracotta is I used to be a cereal overwaterer. I used to water my plants too often and terracotta is a porous material. So as you water your soil, this will actually wick water out of your soil. So when I was learning how to water my plants, this was helpful because terracotta is a more forgiving material. Whereas if you pot it in a ceramic, the pot is going to do nothing to wick water out. So I love the porous wicking material. I love how affordable these are. A couple of cons is these are fragile. These will break. So you do have to be careful about the that the cons could be patina if you don't enjoy the look of a patina like patina is kind of inevitable with terracotta unless you're committing to soaking them and washing your pots um, but I just think terracotta is an amazing option I wouldn't recommend potting moisture loving plants in terracotta so I wouldn't put calathea or alocasia in terracotta because you're just going to be chasing chasing that sweet plant down watering it all the time succulents cacti ficus, peperomia, plants that are drought tolerant are going to thrive in terracotta. That's the majority of my plant collection, which is why I have so many plants in it. So those are the pros and cons of terracotta. Next stop, you have a glazed ceramic pot. So there's a glaze in this pot which seals the material, I guess. I don't know how pots are made. I'm not an artist. But uh, the glaze allows for the soil to remain moist for a longer period of time. So those calathea and those alocasia that I just said wouldn't do well in terracotta would do great in a glazed pot because it's going to retain the moisture for a longer period of time. I also think the glazed ceramic pots look sleeker than terracotta. So if you're going for a more minimalist vibe, if you're going for a sleeker aesthetic in your home... I just feel like ceramic is a better choice. In terms of cons with these, glazed ceramic pots can be a little bit more expensive to buy. They do retain moisture. So if you put a succulent in a ceramic pot, you have to be more mindful to make sure that it doesn't get root rot. But these are great. And I feel like in most garden centers, these are the two options you're going to find. And for the most part, if you're a mindful waterer, like you can put any plant in any pot. But these are the choices that I make for my collection that I kind of wanted to tell you about. Next up is plastic. A lot of the pros that ceramic have, plastic also has. So it retains moisture. It's not going to wick, right? So any moisture loving plant is going to go great in plastic. You can get these little plastic pots at any garden center for free. So in terms of affordability, that's great. A con is that they're hideous, right? No one likes the look of this. You can often put this inside of another pot if you're worried. Like say you only have 
say all of your plants are in terracotta and you like that aesthetic, but you have a moisture loving plant, you could pot the moisture loving plant in plastic and then just like slip it into a terracotta pot that it fits in. Now, I have to shout out a brand that I absolutely will love. Their name is Wally Grow. If you remember my apartment in New York City, I had an epic green wall that was with Wally Grow planters. They made this new product called the Wally Grow Loop. It's made from recycled plastic and it's actually pretty. It's a plastic pot that actually looks nice. This pot was designed to hang on the wall. I have many plants in these pots. I have never hung them on the wall. They very cleverly designed it with a flat bottom. So I use these on my tables because this is actually a leak resistant planter. So let me show you why. The thing I love about this is it's actually kind of a self watering pot, which is really cool. Once again, for those moisture loving plants, like having something that is going to water itself and wick up the water that it needs makes that makes it really easy. Also, I talk about if you need to increase humidity for plants, you can do a little hack that I learned online, which is basically taking a little bit of sphagnum moss. You take a little bit of sphagnum moss and you line in between the inner and the outer pot, and then you water that sphagnum moss. And the sphagnum moss is going to evaporate and create a little microclimate of humidity. I think that's a really cool hack. But anyway... I love this type of plastic pot. And now there are a lot of different companies that are trying to make pots out of upcycled cool materials like ocean bound plastic, the way this one is. And I think that's really cool. So this also is going to be the demo for the self-watering pot. There's multiple different types of self-watering pots that you can get. Some of them, you see the ones that have like the wick, the two pots, the wick runs through, the bottom wick sits in a container of water, the top wick wicks the water up and then releases it into the soil. The way this one works is you water in here, um, this inner pot, which has holes on the bottom, sits in here and then wicks up the water through that. The self-watering system is great for people who travel a lot. It's great for collections of moisture-loving plants. I'm going to be honest, it's not great for me. What I have found is if I have only one or two plants in self-watering pots, what I have found is because I'm top-watering the rest of my plant collection, I actually forget about my self-watering planters. And I have now multiple times let the self-watering planter dry out because it's almost on a completely different time, uh, time schedule than the rest of my plants. So for me, in my personal practice, I just have top water. You know, I just water all my plants from the top and I bottom water when I need to. Um, but I know so many plant parents that self-watering pots were great for. So I wanted to make sure you understood that that was an option available to you. Um, now I wanted to talk about, you know, one of the biggest things with pots that I say, especially to beginners, please, 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 if you learn any from, anything from me on this YouTube channel, please do this, especially if you're a beginner with your house plants. Only put your plants in pots with drainage holes, okay? I have overwatered and killed so many plants <laughs> because when I was younger in my plant parenthood, I used to put plants in pots with no drainage holes. I would put too much water in it. The water would have nowhere to go. The roots would sit in water at the bottom of the pot. They would rot and they would die, okay? This is a serious thing that I know so many people have done. It's so heart-wrenching to think that you're doing a good job watering the plant, and then just because you don't have the drainage hole, you end up killing it by root rot, okay? Just have all your pots in pots, just have all your plants in pots with drainage holes, okay? Now, I understand that especially a lot of ceramic pots that you buy at the Anthropologies and the CB2s and like the really fancy stores, they're not going to have holes at the bottom, right? This was a really cool pot that I found at a local garden center that I absolutely love. There's no hole in the bottom. I get it. I love gold. I wanted to bring it back. I wanted this plant, this pot in my collection. So all you have to do is the cash po method. Cash po is French, C-A-C-H-E-P-O-T. It means like hidden pot. So basically, all you do is you put the plant in the plastic pot with holes at the bottom, and then you just slide it into the outer pot that has no holes. When I water the plant, I water this pot, I let it drip dry, I dump the water that might collect out in here, and then I just put it back. And that keeps your plant so much happier. Once again, learn from my mistakes, plant friends. The other thing I wanted to say about pots is this is your opportunity to really turn anything into a pot, right? Like this was not a pot. However, I don't remember what this was. This was like some silly gift someone gave me, but you can turn it into a pot very simply by planting a little plant in here and putting it in. Like I've got my little Fetonia over here, right? 
you can slide this little Fetonia into this guy. You can slide this little Fetonia into a vintage teacup that maybe you buy or a vintage teapot. You can thrift stuff, right? And then all of a sudden, these little plastic pots that you buy for free become your best friend because all you have to do is pot a plant in this and then slide it into anything you want. And that's where you can really be explorative with your decor and with your aesthetic in your house, right? Like the sky's the limit. Another thing with pots that I wanted to say is I find, you know, when I travel, I want to bring home something special. And it's really hard to travel and bring plants home. There's a lot of guidelines and paperwork that you frankly have to do, especially if you're traveling internationally. But what I have found is I love traveling to new places and buying pots by local artisans there. Like I said, I have a lot of terracotta planters. So I try and find terracotta artisans. And now I have a really cool collection of pots that I've collected from all over the world. A terracotta pot with a face on it that I got in, in Mexico the week I got engaged. A terracotta pot that's made from local local mud in Oklahoma that I got while I was there for a week. I just think pots are a really fun way to get mementos from the places that you visit that don't involve having to like stick a live plant in your suitcase and smuggle it into another country, which I would never advise. So here's my breakdown of pots. Let me know if I missed anything. If you have other questions, I'm happy to make another video. I hope this was helpful. Use pots with holes in them, plant friends. Let me know what your favorite type of pot is. Please, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up subscribe, tell the YouTube gods that you approve of this YouTube channel. It's so fun making these videos for you. You can feel free to go check out my podcast called Growing Joy with Plants if you're a podcast listener too. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep growing joy.